okay uh, very good evening uh, welcome to the afternoon session of the fourth day of the training program on strategic planning and management of technical institutions i hope you must uh, have enjoyed your lunch and uh, i hope you will be regaining your energy within 5 or 10 minutes okay now uh, in the afternoon session uh, we have with us uh, shri arun Sh sharma ji uh, who is working as regional project manager with sarthak educational trust Uh, which is uh, currently uh, uh, daily uh, handling one center from uh, chandigarh from nitpt at chandigarh and uh, basically uh, i will not go into detail what sarthak is all about because when sir starts with the presentation he will be briefing you about so uh, basically uh, arun sir is is uh, having masters in finance from university of glasgow scotland and uh, he is uh, as per my interaction with him he is a very humble person and down to earth person having a degree from a foreign country but still having it his roots att attachments with the indian context or, or the country india and he is working for an ngo uh, non government organization called sarthak educational trust so today uh, we requested him to engage a session on uh, planning and management of an social organization uh, a case study kind of thing so uh, without taking any time uh, i welcome uh, arun sir to this session uh, of the training program and without any taking any further time i i, I hand it over the platform to uh, arun sir to interact with you regarding the theme thank you thank you very much thank you thank you professor uh, that was a quite humble and uh, you know brief introduction we have a uh, good afternoon everyone and uh, I welcome you all on this uh, EDICT program of strategic planning and management. I think it's in a lovely day out within a celebration of Science Day as in an international thing, and we can see an you know strategic planning that has been done by the NITER, the EIDC department, you know using the science and technology to gather all the center optimum utilization of the resources. I think I should congratulate them. You know that's a perfect use. so coming back to the session um, i have been asked to take in a session on planning management uh, on in a social organization well before i start in a session that uh, brings out to me in a question uh, which in a you know ideology thinking that nitter has to bring a social organization to an a platform where we have all the management uh, people uh, from the educational institute are, are sitting in it uh, because the basic criteria of looking at an ngo or an a social organization is that they are non productive uh, but if you see it on a, on a longer and a broader picture any entity that has an a motive of producing result um, let it be an ngo or an economic organization uh, is driven and uh, working on an same platform of strategic management and planning in order to you know uh, give you a brief and an extensive thing that how we can uh, bring an uh, organization together Uh, of an ngo culture to mix in match with an economic organization or an a profit making entity i have divided my presentation in uh, two parts the first phase or the first part of my presentation will be basically on the models that we have opted uh in order to get the result uh, and the second thing will be an uh, an exact case study where i'll be discussing step by step uh, procedures uh usually that is common in uh, most of the social organization and some of the economic organizations um, as well uh, the main idea of uh, conducting this is to look at the motive perspective if we look at the motive perspective uh, the motive perspective for both uh, any social organization or any ngo organization you call it any you know profit making entity is the same they work on a platform result producing and uh, the measurement of their results are different i mean for an economic it is measured in terms of their turnover growth rupees uh, their market share uh, but in terms of uh, you know ngos it differs not exactly differs but it actually matches because we 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 also measure our uh, you know performance our uh, strategic planning management effective is on the impact on the society so it considered to be one of the uh, Um, you know, uh, common goal that we have. Uh, coming back to my first phase of presentation, uh, the effective planning and management skills. Um, there are some contents that I'll be covering it today. 
the first thing is how to be an effective management the second will be on how to become effective the third is a uh, what is leadership the fourth is a what is competency and the fifth one is effective plan now if you see the see the you know the perspective of this uh, presentation uh, the base matches you know base of an ngo that is working here uh, with an adjoining hatch with netter and uh, the other entities that these are the main key points that are quite similar in both the entity so coming back to our first one the first one is uh, how to have an effective management see describing an effective management has in a very broader uh, you know aspects and covering that uh, a single topic is is not possible to do in 2 hours or in even a day but i've tried it my level best in order to streamline it and uh, in order to you know uh, discuss in an extensive way where i can cover within a maximum input and in a maximum output so first thing that you know uh, most of the people fails to understand is is about the goal Uh, in any organization there are number of people are involved you know uh, from top level management middle level management and a lower level management so one thing that uh, is has to be common uh, for in a strategic planning is a goal right uh, whatever the top level management thinks or whatever the bottom level management thinks and whatever the lower that has to be a common in order to have in a sound organization and uh, has to be a result oriented um second thing that we are quite sure in figuring out the goal uh, for example uh, you know everybody wants to grow uh, everybody wants to take an uh, you know step forward in the career but do we really have an exact inside knowledge that what we want to do do, do we ever do a swot analysis for our organization or our uh, our goals that are we really worth it or are we really you know competent enough to uh, achieve that goal and i'm sure you know most of them when i go out to the organization for the audits and i see this is the main problem that we have we have an a common goal and which is very generalized but we can't specify it to in a certain level and what is the main thing that is lacking in it is a road map in order to achieve an a you know any result or any goal you need to do a step by step uh, transition or the you know step by step management but uh, if we fail to understand if we fail to divide that road map and if we fail to draw that exact uh, level of uh, you know achieving then um, i think it is uh, quite impossible to understand and uh, quite impossible to achieve the level of uh, you know thing that we want to be or the platform where we want to be third thing is invest in the human resource now especially it's in a problem within a startup organization you know when we look at an organization which is a newly started up uh, there are tend to be um, you know so many fluctuation in terms of human resource and they have always have an idea that you know there are so many colleges outside there are so many organizations so there is not a shortage of human resource probably they're going to they're going to manage that human resource in in a, in a in a you know you know more better perspective of finances or in terms of output but one thing which we always uh, you know neglect and we don't understand is the investment not in terms of monetary but in terms of uh, time energy that we have put into that uh, human resource and i think that is the most valuable thing uh, that you have because you know any resources like money or the trainings that can be repeated but the time and an effort that you have put in or shown in that human resource that can't be you know came back to the same level you have to start from a zero so this is another thing that management has to look into it you know apart from uh, the other thing the third thing is uh, the reflective personality uh, i understand my you know and i go back to my university days back in england uh, this professor always asked to me you know that always be like in a mirror and uh, during that time you know that was a quite young age around some in uh, 2006 so i was like uh, what do you mean by a mirror you know man one fine day during i, I was entering that uh, session i stopped my professor and I said sir you have to tell me what is a mirror so he told me it's an it's an another management lesson that we have is is a, a mirror personality is also known as a reflective personality you know if you look at a mirror it is a thing which absorbs that is in front of it 
and then reflect to the you know nature so if the management is not impulsive if so the management is not reluctant it has to be in a reflective personality you know we need to adopt it because we have to attain that level where you know we absorb the thing and then come out with a result because everybody has their own uh, you know thinking they have was got their own persona they have got their own um, way of uh, experiencing the things they have their own way of um, explaining the things but management is a platform where they need to collide that energy you know that converting that energy into synergy so this is another and a very important perspective that we need to keep in mind uh, while we you know conduct in an effective planning or you know if you talk about a management or any kind of uh, roles or assignment the next point that is adopt the changing environment uh, if uh, you know before i explain i'll i'll touch on a small story that we i'll share it with you you know during the evolution of this uh, mobile and uh, this uh, scenario of all technology nokia in india was one of the very emerging uh, organization you know there used to be so many models of nokia I still remember 33 10 11 110 and that is not far it is somewhere around 6 7 years back you know nokia was leading the market but look at look at that scenario now they didn't adopt for the change they didn't they didn't revolutionize the things they didn't uh, went to the environment where the you know the customers are uh, requiring a, a different perspective so you can well imagine that you know what is the condition or what is a percent market sharing of nokia in india as compared to other organizations so we need to keep in mind that you know we might currently we might be on a path that leads to an excellence but that path requires an irregular interval of changing environment changing and adaptation that is you know uh, from the social environment from the media from the people around us so we need to make sure that you know these are the small small perspective of you know, being a flexibility uh, is there in the um, in the management because if you do if you know, don't have a flexibility to adopt a change then the problem arises then there is a situation where we need to think about it but if you you know from a beginning of the things management and a flexibility to understand to manage the things adopt the things then i think uh this uh, solves your problem to a greater extent last but not the least that is the optimal utilization of the resources um i was once uh, with one of the you know leading um, audit firms honest and young was there and uh, i have uh, you know studied the reports uh, how do they analyze and audit the things and what are the challenges they face and comprising that uh, you know reports within an organization i feel the biggest challenge is optimum utilization of our resources and you know, i'll share an example uh, in metro cities you know there are a culture of um, night schools and uh, you know uh, evening classes and if we compare that culture uh, basically you know they we say that is in a way forward thing with our organization that you know for me i have three rooms with an capacity of 30 chairs and um, i use it for my regular 9:30 to 5:30 and after that uh, you know i stopped using it but still if i look out for the resources and you know start in a in a, in a shift of an evening batches that doubles my capacity you know with the same structure with the room with the same you know um, uh, resources i have i can utilize that on on a better note and i can come out to a level of 60 candidates per day and you know if if you relatively compare it to the result on the um on the on the bigger uh, prospect that comes out you know 800 around 180 800 students in a month so these are the small small analysis the management needs to keep in mind you know that resources are limited the things are being uh, framed enough uh, that can't be changed easily so are we using that on 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 optimum resources i mean i still consider you know my i handling around six center so i always try to make it a 95% of my optimum utilization and that too drives me you know um, to the level where i have to sit down a long hours to make it and management yes but the results are very prominent the second thing uh, that we'll be discussing here is how to be an effective 
it's in a very very basic simple model that uh, we are following uh, in, uh, in in uh, sarthak uh, basically we have a capacity of producing 3000 uh, a person with disability trained manpower in a year with our nine centers so in order to maintain that thing what we do is plan implement control and learn now before i explain all these things i'll, I'll share in a small example i mean uh, during my management studies uh, uh, have this uh, internship that i was supposed to do in uh, in england so um, uh, this was a plant shift that uh, we are doing it so we were the management ready assisting the japanese in terms of shifting that plant from an italy to scotland so do you know you know during our 45 days of working we were so much engrossed didn't get a much time to interact with the people but uh, yes one on a very fine day uh, you know there was an uh, you know uh, what do you call the uh, a dinner uh, hosted by the the industry you know and just to you know bring down all the platform for the senior middle and lower management to have an, a common celebration because we have successfully completed the um, the shifting of a plant on time so i i was you know was keen and quite you know uh, enthusiastic to ask the japanese that you know what is the difference that we face uh or that you experience uh, comparing japan with the rest of the world you know if you go back to the history uh, 6th of august is a day where uh, the nuclear attack on hiroshima nagasaki was happened that is happened to be just after two days and you know there was a devastation killing of around 150000 people you know almost damaging 60% of the economy but look at japan now so they 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 explain it in a, in a very you know uh, a very layman or kind of a very clear cut perspective that the thing that stood japan uh, you know uh, distinguished from rest of the world that we spend 90% of our time on planning and controlling and only 10% is spent on the implementation and if i compare to you know especially uh the organization that i've been to it is always a reverse we spend 10% on the planning and 90% on the implementation so that comes out to be reverse so you know if we compare that thing in this that you know if we plan accordingly spend our maximum input in terms of planning that how we need to do how we need to perform this activity to to a very detailed way then we implement that thing on in, in the way that it can be you know managed and going according to a plan third thing is controlling you know a plan there's a handful of people making a plan implementing it but there's a vast management that has got on a shoulder to imply that thing and to you know put that thing on the, on the level so we need to control that thing and quite a fourth thing is learn in my career of uh, around 9 years my most loved department was the feedback department. you know because that is a real picture that we get it from the people you know conducting all these advocacy programs uh, on a massive level of national or international level I always happen to take it on a on a feedback level why because that is a thing where i can learn and where can i can absorb and where i can improvise myself you know taking a credit of planning implementation control it all comprises on on a picture that is a feedback that how much feedback and what kind of positive feedback you get it is that your event is really successful or you there's in a changes you know even a small small feedback that matters a lot and that helps me in improvising my you know my strategies of uh, applying uh, the skill development process or strategy of applying a management in handling the nine centers across the nation if you move on to the next thing uh there's another important uh, perspective of a strategic management and planning is is a leadership you know it is defined uh, that you know if you ask in a, what is a leadership it is a person who can lead but that is something which is uh, a, a, a very layman thing that we ask it right you know working in a, in a management there are so many other perspectives that you need to think about it and you need to you know take in control if you are leading in a program the very first thing is a share a vision with the team you see the hierarchy most of the time i mean especially 60% of the organization what has happened 
there are goals achieved or there are goals set by the top management and that remain in the top management and only the workload is shifted to the down management that only results in chaos you know it's a, it's like you know walking on a path where you tend to achieve in a glory but you are blindfolded so that never gives you a pleasure uh, of working and that ne never involves your management towards the achievement of goal or kind of you know achievement of your uh, uh, the perspectives that you are looking at it so very first thing is 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 uh, you know flowing that energy flowing that vision from top level to the uh, bottom management so, uh, no no a good management because you know these are the leak or loopholes that we have that once it has been shooted then uh, we don't care we just think about the result but we need to do this hand holding in terms of providing support in terms of guiding them in terms of mentoring them and in terms of giving them a credit and and in terms of taking a blame of it um i was reading this article uh, you know uh, this was a time when nasa was launching its first spaceship so uh, they were asked that you know what 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 is the difference that you did to the management that you know with a handful of people you have launched in a spaceship uh, the, the satellite that we call it so there was a pure and simple answer that is uh, there from this guy he said from the top scientist to the man who was actually you know cleaning the floor he was sensitized and motivated enough that you know if you ask him that what are you doing then he's going to reply you that i am supporting the management in terms of launching in a satellite so that is a that is a thing you know if you see with a handful of people if they are sensitized enough if they are channelized enough then they can do on a you know wonders but that is that role needs to be done by the management especially by the leaders uh, of the departments that we have within a proper check now the fourth thing that we discuss is about the competence everyone has their own quality of understanding explaining and uh, in terms of sharing the things but management should have an a responsibility to you know see that whether that person is capable enough to understand it and especially in my organization if i look at the things i see and apply this model to you know understand whether the the my human resource is competent enough to understand it is competent enough to drive it is competent enough to flow its energy is competent enough to follow the results and this cash model the first thing k stand for the knowledge we need to check that whether the human resource that we have or we are training or the kind of skill set that we are expecting they have this full uh, knowledge about the organization they know about their stakeholders that are involved in it are they are fragile enough or they are competent enough to absorb in the environment that is there do they have a proper knowledge of their partners and staff so these are the basic check on um, every manager or project manager or or a trainee or even even a volunteer if we hire in order to you know support our organization second thing is attitude i mean you know 90% of a person attitude is almost clear when he, you know he drives into your room you can well imagine is going to be a reasoning is going to be an argumental is going to be a positive or it's going to be a free flow but managing and uh, you know analyzing and uh, transferring that thing to your management goal is very much important the third thing is a, is a skill set now you know most of the time we get confused you know comparing a skill set with a skill set within a degree um you know taking my example i am in a management um, you know masters in finance from university of glasgow initial my days were from royal bank of scotland and nistin young and that is all together a different entity as compared to the one i am working it now so if you compare my skill set i'm not an msw masters in social work but yes i have written three papers research papers on social work i am not an a phd scholar or bachelor or any 
hinge of related to uh, social work or the society but yes i'm i'm working on a skill management for person with disability with the impact of 6150 uh, placement across uh, india so matching a skill set as is in a is in a very crucial thing you know that involves a planning communication adopt of change and you know your enthusiasm towards the development and for a good management this needs to be keep in mind you know we need to understand that if there might be a chances uh, that he doesn't know he or she doesn't have an a degree or he doesn't uh, he she or she doesn't follow a certain criteria but his flow of energy is uh, is towards that uh, management goal or is fits in the energy or not the fourth thing is a habit you know most of the time uh, we have this rigid rule that uh, this needs to be followed this needs to be followed this is the time table this is a thing yes they are very much important to be in discipline and there is a reason behind it so before you pursue anything or before you proceed anything towards the thing that you know these are the things that needs to be done or these are the things that needs to be follow you need to check a validity behind it you know there might be a chance that uh, you know a habit of conducting an uh, uh, a you know starting up an organization 9 in the morning is in a good role or um, uh, in chandigarh but if you realize that thing in a remote area where person has to commute for almost one and a half to two hours a daily if you expect him to be in a discipline and change the things accordingly for a 9 am it doesn't make a sense so altering that habit and also altering that uh, scenario and perspective is very much important that again bring back to our you know bring us back to our previous model that we had discussed is the flexibility so these are the you know the basic structure of managing uh, that we are being we've been following here in uh, sarthak and the last thing uh, the fifth very important thing for an effective management and a planning is an action plan you know as i said without an action plan just looking at the uh, is a prospect of you know achieving a goal doesn't solve a purpose and rather than making an action plan which is just confined to a person or a room is also not an advisable decision because if he is organization if a management is involved and uh, if other things are being uh, assessed and a uh, you know, decision are made on basis of that i think we should take it to a better picture and here back in sarthak you know when i asked my managers to you know uh, make an uh, academic plan i mean for a financial plan for a quarterly weekly draws down to a daily and a, uh, followed by an yearly assessment these are the things that i you know make sure that they exist in an action plan the very first thing is a critical self assessment you know my compare it that you know i love to play cricket but i can't be a sachin tendulkar so you know i know my capability of uh, performing i mean uh, i have been playing cricket from a childhood but you know if you perform my capabilities or my ability towards in within a sachin tendulkar so that's an, another and a loss so judging all the managers on the same platform is not an as good as you know judging somebody within a you know shri uh, sir sachin tendulkar second thing is the revisit and raise goals you know i tend to understand we fail to uh, you know uh, in management especially uh, we fail to understand the potential of an uh, um, uh, of our employees or of our colleagues or of our human resource and for me i mean i work on a very very simple platform by anyhow i raise the actual goals by 20 to 30% you know that is something which is like overestimating you know raising an uh, an handsome raise to 25 to 30 is me but this is if we see the you know positive prospect of it i am bringing out an a flexibility and checking their capacity to expand their capacity to support i am achieving what i am supposed to achieve rather 
the third thing is implementation of the PICL that is planning implementation control and learning it has to be in a regular process you know we uh, we conduct on a quarterly meeting with all the managers on, on the same perspective you know revisit their plans you know see what have they what, what they have performed uh, what are the lacking what are the shortcomings they have and then re analyzing their goal raising if they have achieved or even you know decreasing it to do to the optimal utilization of the resources and you know, to the achievement level so this quarterly uh, intervention or investment is is very much important in this PICL process and in terms of you know a good effective plan the third thing is be a leader manager now what is a leader manager see uh, basic thing if we which i implant to my you know colleagues is is a human body is of two hands two eyes one brain so that limit your capacity to perform an activity in 24 hours rather than you know i just promote them and you know, support them to be an 8 hours of shift and not, nothing proud to that and nothing after to that so in order to uh, you know uh, compensate that um, hurdle we need to be in a, uh, a a manager who taken a leadership by taking all the members together it it can also be explained with an you know delegation of authority uh, with implementation of the uh, the goal and the part the path that we have achieved but that you need to implant it and you need to make sure you know that this is a part of involving all the management or all the um, colleagues that you have for an a better result next thing is a keep learning on the cash thing i mean for someone it is uh, uh, might be a different as compared to the things what we are doing here but the basic you know motive is, is the same the basic motive is the same you know these are the basic pillars that can be there in each and everything that we have the last and which is a most important thing is a self value addition you know if i compare it to in a layman language i ask my managers to be a mean machine i want to stand one thing uh, you know if we comprise one thing we always think about putting something to an organization you know adding this to an organization adding this to to our uh, center adding this to our uh, department but that comes within yourself you know every 3 months we have this meeting and we we think and we analyze our portfolios that you know uh, that i was there i was at that position handling these all are the portfolios these all are the departments with this much achievement whether i have achieved something whether i have improved something in it so once we start improving ourselves once we start adding values to our uh, uh, portfolios or our own value addition things the rest is automatically done i mean when i was uh, when i joined uh, my organization i was just hired as an assistant project manager you know my duty was just to coordinate with one project that runs in chandigarh and that to restrict to an employment but you know i keep my hands in everything i start learning about the mobilization activities i start learning about the database i've learned about the trainings i've learned about the employment and advocacy so these are the thing which did an a value addition to my own uh, portfolio and along with that i'm putting a value addition to the organization because i am expanding my capacity and with a span of 2 years right promoted to an original project manager so this is something which has been a well uh, used model or you can say well implemented model that i've seen in many of the organization um, that you know the leaders follow that they they start uh, doing value addition to the Uh, to their own um, portfolios and once it is done with a with an a positive motive then things happen on on a very prospective note so i think this is basically uh, comprises of my the initial model that PICL and cash that we are implementing uh, in the, in the sarthak educational trust and um, um, in then in, in the next slide probably i'll be continuing more on the Uh, on the implementation part of these models uh, you know defining about the verticals that we have in our organization 
and how we do the changes and uh, what are the things that we have adopted in this uh, organization because um, you know uh, there's a, there's always a concept that um, ngos and social organization are uh, are always in a lay back organizations they are not uh, as competent enough and when i was discussing this thing in nitter i was surprised when they have uh, you know requested me and asked me to come down to deliver a le uh, lecture because i think they have a capability to understand uh, that uh, management remains the same it is only the motive that differs and seeing to our results that we have uh, produced in uh, in last two years of our uh, joint partnership with uh, with nitter i think uh, it is in a well explained model so i'll bring down to my next presentation so coming back to the uh, you know things that we have discussed in our previous uh, presentation and before i further go on to the sarthak education trust uh, working I, i really want to you know give an insight uh, it was started in 2008 and it was uh, started by dr jitendra agrawal and now dr agrawal was an a practice dentist and uh, due to macular uh, degeneration you know he's lost as uh, 80% of his vision in 2003 so in 2003 when he lost his vision he actually realizes one thing that how painful and uh, how much disturbing a life for a person with this gives him to the person with disability so since 2003 till 2008 he was been to all these organizations and ngos and seeing uh, the different models that has been opted in uh, the various uh, parts of the country there's one thing was there that everybody just talk about the training programs they just told you about you know this is the training program what we going to do computer training hardware training software training and a beauty wellness training but if you compare our training program that you know if we don't achieve to a next level for example if you don't give them an employment then it is of no use it is something you know very commonly said you train an army with the best arms and ammunition uh, sorry with best practices and then you send them to a border and ask them you know that uh, we can't provide you arms and ammunition so it is of no use so in 2008 he started with sarthak education trust in delhi Uh, with the sole motive or a mission uh, that we have in sarthak is to empower person with disability in enab enabling them to live their life with dignity and respect and uh, that can only be achieved through a financial model of you know uh, providing them employment so basically uh, you know in the things that we only work on training and employment you know we might be having this consolidated activities to on a different verticals but if you can find them to uh, in two words that training and employment that we just do it here and yes we do have an a vision we do have an a vision of establishing sarthak adarsh kendra that is skill building and early intervention centers across nation we managed to achieve uh, nine centers in different parts of the country uh, three are in the pipeline for skill building uh, two early intervention centers but yes there are lot many things that we are in hoping to achieve the second thing which is another important thing is is on the values that we have uh, and that will be working here on the sarthak and that is a, a model of share now s stands for social justice h stand for honesty and hard work a stand for affection and trust R stands for respect for human. It's uh, E stands for excellence. So if we, you know, compile of all these things uh, that we have um, here in social organizations, especially in Sarthak, uh, and comparing my own personal experience working with another organization and working for an, a non-government, uh, you know, non-profit organizations uh, like Sarthak, there's a huge difference that. in in uh, any ngos we are more responsible and it is a more hectic work sch schedule than working in any of the profit making or an economic making entity because in that organization we are just answerable to our line managers 
but if you work in an organization uh, which is which is an ngo you are answerable to your line manager you are answerable to the management you are answerable to your funding partners you are answerable to the government you are answerable to your resource mobilization partners and on top of that which is another most important thing you are answerable to the society that is another big thing that we have in this organizations you know the social economic or social organizations that we have like sarth we work on the different fields uh, we work on health we work on education skill building and employment so these are the three diversify projects or kind of heads that we have for our working and uh, diversity in the organization what exactly we do see according to the you know pwd act 1995 there are seven disabilities that are marked under it as per my current knowledge you know there are another eight that are supposed to be there but uh, not yet so we are working on orthopedically challenged people hearing impaired people and visually impaired people with age group of 18 to 35 for skill building center from 0 to 5 for early, early intervention center and from 5 to 18 for our inclusive education center so three disabilities within a match of around uh, say before evaluation before a birth of a child that we take care of expecting mothers and doctors with our early intervention project till the age of uh, 32 to 35 depends we are very much into you know disability uh, mainstreaming disability to in the skill building in the employment and in the uh, in the education system and how do we do it uh, for the skill building we have the nine centers we have a center in delhi a uh, very much own center here in chandigarh in netter itself we have a center in jaipur ludhiana lucknow mumbai pune and hyderabad so since start of our center um, we have trained uh, close to 3050 person with disability and uh, we have placed more than 6100 person with disability across india maintaining the dignity of work and this is what we follow here in sarthak and apart from you know there's another thing which i really want to emphasize and want to mention is that we follow a business model here in sarthak that we don't work on a charity or on a mercy model for example if we train our candidates and we send them out for the employment or if we take them out for an employment we respect the protocol of the organization in terms of interviewing in terms of salary in terms of uh, location and in terms of other uh, structures that they have we don't interfere in that all we want is are all we are trying to build an a bridge where we we are bringing up this uh, candidates towards in a platform where they also get an a fair chance in com- to compute or commute with the the rest of the um, you know um, uh, people around it and that brings down to be an um, uh, an a thing uh, an a, an example or an incident that i want to share with you around 2 years back we started working with tata business support solution systems it's in a tbss uh, it's in a you know kpo and bpo entity that exist in mohali and uh, on a very very first time i sent my around 15 candidates out for an employment for um, the interview and the success rate was not even 1% you know nobody nobody got succeed in terms of cracking the uh, interview and uh, they came up to rushing to my center and they were uh you know yelling at me that sir this is not a joke this is in a way to exploit person with disability how can they expect us to not to be you know compute with all these people and do all these things so i made them understand that you know this is in a situation if happens to be in your house in your house your father mother or anybody who's uh, is in a you know senior has an a responsibility to make decisions whether that uh, person going to be you know entertained or not and do you think you going to give this right to anybody else so they came up to me and said sir yes you absolutely right so this is the same thing which we uh, we have here in uh, organizations they want you not for your disability they want you for your competence uh, and your capability 
we developed the training programs we did some initiatives and now i'm proudly say that you know we we bagging at around 40% of success rate we're sending uh, candidates to this organization with matching around 6 to 7 rounds of interview uh, without interfering in a single of them apart from organizing this thing so this is what we have attained attained here in sarthak and maintained here to achieve the things and uh, to bring change to the society and uh, when we talk about you know getting change to the society especially you know taking the macro level planning to a micro level planning it can't be achieved without you know having a strategic management or you know proper planning and understanding of the society and nature and probably the people working with us so you know moving on to the next slide if we if we work um, uh, for if you talk about the organizational pillars that we have in sarthak the very first thing is a mobilization and that very much explained uh, to the organization that like for us the it is the candidate and uh, for other organization it is the customers the second thing uh, that we have is a database here in sarthak we maintain the details of the candidate that have been registered to us or been contacted by us but in organization everybody keeps a record of their you know sale purchase or their management their suppliers their vendors the third thing is the training program that we have here uh, in sarthak that is basically a transition that happens uh, changing synergies into synergies and in other organization most of, most of the emit is converting um, the you know the result oriented goal that has been asked or discussed within a management the next thing that we have is an employment so for us you know reward uh, that we get out of our working is employment that happens for the person with disability and for other management or other organization it happens to be a profit or uh, some other measurable unit so this brings down to be in a very common platform that you know uh, that we have and we share now further that we discuss detail about the mobilization uh, i follow a very simple uh, strategy for a mobilization and that is stay hungry and out of giving so that brings out to be other uh, things that um, i ask my mobilizing team that you know don't get ever get satisfied that you know uh, they always say that i have an um, you know a database of 4500 candidate i have a database of 50000 which comprises to the organization that you know i have a market share of 10% i have a market share of 9% i have a market share of 50% don't comprise and don't satisfy yourself with that level compare yourself keep growing keep adding values to your um, the database keep adding values to the bank that you have uh, for the mobile from the mobilization so that it can be you know uh, looked upon and can be updated on a regular basis and things can be worked on a smoother basis and if you compare to an see you know it's in a small thing everybody knows a bottle of coca cola right if you buy an a bottle of coca cola or any any fizzy drink so till the time that bottle of uh, fizzy drink is intact i mean the seal is not broken it is filled with an fizz open that uh, fizz bottle it start evaporating even the lid is closed so you know backing upon and you know cherishing our things that you know this is what we have we have achieved is something is not going to helpful and is not going to be a flourishing thing for the future we need to keep looking for the things we need to keep adding values we need to keep adding our um, uh, you know inputs we need to keep changing our plans we need to keep adapting the regular change that has been required here in sarthak you know um, in specially for the mobilization um, we have uh, developed these 11 um, verticals that that support our uh, mobilization team for the data or for the mobilization of the candidate and that has mentioned equally about the within a contribution right you know social welfare department that has been got a support from us the employment exchange department they share an equal percentage the medical camps and hospital it's in 41% quite huge 
the college is 1%, school 2%, and uh, the NGO's participation, transportation, special hostel facility, community visits, and the advocacy thing. So this is a deep analysis that we know, analysis that we did it uh, on, on a macro level of understanding it. These are the basically uh, uh, you know, uh, paths that we'll be covering towards the achievement of our goal. You know, Every center has a capacity of uh, producing 300 candidates and achieving a common goal of an organization of training and placing above 20,000 persons with disability across India by 2020. We need to do this detailed analysis. And we need to understand within a perspective as well that, you know, the basic vertical is going to be the same in all the organization, in all, all, all the, sorry, centers of Sarthak. But the other thing, uh, the contribution from it is going to be a different. So this can be in a common platform achieving in a common goal through in a different perspective for our uh, mobilization process. I'll also share some of the best practices that you know how we uh, evaluate our uh, program or uh, what is the basic formula that we are doing it here um, to manage it and to uh, you know make sure it is uh, applicable on the on the on the level of achieving a goal that we achieve our uh, you know uh, we, we divide a level in two parts one is a phase one and uh, second is a phase two. So phase one uh, that comprises me, you know, that uh, collecting all the data from uh, the social welfare department awareness and uh, awareness camps, PWD identification, Anganwadi workers, employment exchange, uh, hospitality, man medical management, um, and then comprising bringing to a database level. And then we divide, uh, then we channelize our manage, uh, you know, uh, mobilization team to approach. Uh, whether we need to go for an, a community visit, whether we need to go for an, a mass media mobilization, whether we need to go for an, a telewist, uh, telephonically approach or uh, the other resources that we have. And on basis of the analysis or the kind of results that we get it from a phase one or from our first part of the, um, the plan, we plan our second phase accordingly. Like, you know, working in the field of person with disability, you know, it's been almost been an eight years. Uh, we have realized that, you know, that first phase has been absorbed to a greater extent. Now we need to go to the next level of, uh, you know, networking. That is another another important thing in, in our organization. You know, networking with the NGOs, with the special schools, with the colleges, and uh, with the social workers getting uh, your hands on the media advertisement like Nukkad Nata, cable TV and a pamphlet distribution. So these are the things that has been happening because we are doing a detailed analysis on and keeping a regular check on our performances, uh, you know, breaking our uh, targets to a minimum level of a daily target as from, uh, from an yearly target. These are the, you know, I have some of the pictures that uh, I really want to share, the, some of the camps that has been organized by our team in order to mobilize and um, you know in order to, so you can see a team that has been working towards it. The second part that I'll be moving on to is the training program. Now if you discuss you know if we talk about the training program and you know, it can be anywhere it is in a mix of science and an art. And it is a form of changing your energies into synergies. So, you know, this happens to be something that science is what is taught in the classroom and art is, you know, how you applicable that thing in the real world, which is altogether a different scenario. So when we were designing our, uh, you know, training program, we did an analysis of, of impact, that how much impact will it leave on uh, the society or probably the kind of section that we are targeting it. And we are analyzing one thing that, you know, we are following the lead. Um, look, uh, like other people, we are just on the league of, you know, making them sit in the classroom and just, you know, delivering lecture either through a pictorial mode or through the mode of, uh, you know, other uh, media books or anything. So we need to break this uh, uh, monotonous uh, scenario. So we introduce another thing to a training program to, you know, improve our impact. That is the events. 
now in events we have uh, the motivational session happens to be on every month and at every centers uh, that is done by our ex alumni or any person with a disability who has achieved the level after uh, the competence on then we do a guest lecture that we ask the corporates to come in and deliver a lecture make our candidates aware about the you know uh, the organization that has been uh, existing in the in the world the third is exposure visit now you know uh, the exposure visit is something which is which comprises of taking a candidates outside uh, the classroom to the industry you know to an its bpo uh, organization to a retail organization or a hospitality organization so that they can actually get a feel of it and they can understand you know that apart from being a fleshy that you know somebody comes up that i want to work for an it organization i want to work for a retail organization but without measuring the the you know the result the roles and responsibilities that are been there i think it's a foolish on us to you know uh, just to expect the results and just to expect the delivering of lecture and training program without even anal analyzing the impact or even the channelizing that path to achieve that uh, goal we also did an uh, you know swot analysis in terms of breaking our session um, uh, especially um, uh, for uh, the training the classroom training we introduce uh, you know we start a day with an a uh, morning prayer you know that brings an you know uniformity and uh, that brings uh, our uh, us a uh, different from the regular uh, skill building centers that we have the second thing we have is in a mindful activities the third thing that we do is in a revision and the other thing that has been followed during the week is a fundu friday where we do we don't have any books or a training program that has been taught we just work on the activities we learn through activities and the next is a weekly test you know we're keeping a regular check on our delivering has to be is to be very important we need to understand it that whether we are going on a right track because whether they are understanding the the level or the understanding the content that we are delivering to them because that will leads to or that will add to our uh, employment program daily but you know uh, before that uh, i'll share one thing that uh, we always believe in giving the ownership so we started one thing is called the classroom managers you know uh, we just explain them the scenario and we divide the class into classroom managers like you know giving them a responsibility for the recap giving them a responsibility for organizing a morning prayer fund to friday revision cleanliness attendance and everything and once you give the ownership and once you start measuring it you see the changes that has been happening to your employees and to your human resource or to your training partners and for us it it works out to be a very great and an effective model you know that Mm, they are coming up with in a very flying uh, result and a very flying uh, colors of uh, expectations that we adopted from them the second is uh, the events that i have uh, talked and explained to you that you know what is the reason that we have attached a training program uh these events and what are the outcomes i mean uh, for us uh, in our uh, 90 days of training program the first 45 days are basic english basic computers and life skills and then we have an a sectorial based training program on its bpo retail and hospitality so earlier it used to be uh, you know there is an a way out to of doing it that you, know, you can guide a candidate you know that you know this is a good for you this is a best for you or you let them explore and come up that you know i want to be in it sector i want to be in a hospitality sector or uh, i want to be in a um, uh, in a manufacturing sector and that can only be does when you are uh, in a happened when you do in a in a research analysis on the things that you want to deliver and you know get let them have an uh, insight knowledge of what they are prepared for it you know let them check their capability let them check their ability to perform to respond to the environment the third thing is to make a training program is an activity base you know getting a regular uh, tie up app it is very easily done we have an uh, developed content i can you know the trainer can come in come in and deliver the lecture but we don't want it to be in, in a in a regular format because this is not the need of the 
This is not what exactly people are looking for. They, they are coming to you, especially this is a segment which uh, is been uh, not been so you know open front or not been so uh, you know educated enough to understand. But they're looking for a change that you know they might gonna get something different from us. And this is another very big reason for survival uh, for our NGOs because, you know, recently there are so many NGOs around 49,000 NGOs who's been banned by government of India, another organization, and we are lucky enough to, you know, uh, produce results and you know bagging our uh, impact on that and showing us an 100% uh, result. Uh, or in time, some of the centers are above 100%. So these are the small, small things that has been introduced to it, uh, uh, training programs and activities and brought us to a level where we want to be and to an, a, path, a path where we want to achieve our, an, a uniform goal of achieving 20,000 place, trained and placed candidates across uh, the nation. These are some of the pictorial uh, sessions that we have, uh, some of uh, from the classrooms. <clears throat> some of the idle classroom for the orthopedically challenged some uh, there's one on the right bottom of the side it has on a semi circle or you can say on a u shape sitting that is basically for the hearing impaired candidates mm, we work on a peer model of learning and understanding The next thing that we comes out to be is uh, the employment. Now, ask me honestly. Uh, you know, it happens to look to be in a very good, very big task. You know, employing person with disability. But for me, employing a person with disability is not an, a real challenge. The real challenge uh, arises when it comes to a realistic approach of retention. You know, sending a candidate for a job or motivated for a week is not important, but retaining that candidate for a month or a span of six months or a year, that is the most important thing. And this is what we work and suggest it to be. We have managed enough to retain, do a retention program of six months, I mean, uh, three months each after the completion of the course and uh, joining the employment and uh, have achieved in a level of 80% which we want to raise it to 95% by end of uh, 2016 and uh, 17 financial years because you know adding values to yourself and uh, you know raising your goals that is what we are working uh, here in Sarthag and that is what is we are working uh, towards the achievement these are some of the best practices that we have uh, for the employment or any uh, you know before I explain you the things I mean I'll share in a, a small thing that any event or uh, any target has in a three perspective of looking at it a and the post then again uh, if you you know happen to deliver in a, uh, a target or a kind of an achievement goal to towards the people around you and if you explain that uh, uh, you know that you have to achieve this number they might gonna frighten enough for example if I ask in a, in a Chandigarh center to achieve in a number of 350 candidates per person with disability uh, that too where with the population uh, f uh, for the discipline uh, sorry disability is only 2.5 percent and unemployment is uh, close to 8%, it happens to be in a very big thing. But if you break down to the level of, uh, you know, monthly targets, so, uh, you know, 350 breaking to on a monthly target, not even comprising of 30 candidates per day, sorry, per month. And again, breaking down to the normal level, there are 365 days, and uh, if, you, if you, you know, crack one candidate one day, then uh, you know there's there's a there's a possibility you're gonna achieve 365, and your target is 350. So you know showing them a picture where uh, the capacity of a person is to achieve or a level to do it is another uh, thing that we do here in Sartha, especially with an employment. 
that you know uh, we have in a preparation of uh, you know working with more than 200 corporates across india so we have categorized that uh, employment on the basis of its bpo retail hospitality and manufacturing we are entering in the banking and education sector as well but these are the major fields where we have the employment for person with with the disability we have also liaison with the industry head like dic that is directorate of industry centers that cii socam the fiki and other local chambers to expand our research uh, reach for the employment of a person with disability we are also researching on the support of employment through olx uh, just dial and the local classified newspapers for the person of disability so this is another way of you know penetrating in the industry and uh, penetrating uh, towards the common achievement of a goal but before that we need to understand that you know what are the options that we have and what are the things that we can that can be done the second thing that is for the employment is a, is a post follow up it's not only with the candidate but we need to uh, you know have a follow up with the employers as well because when it say you know uh, that placing a person with disability is not in a challenge the challenge arises when it comes to retention so uh, you know in management session i you know in management thing if you talk about entering to a market and raising your goal or market share to uh, xyz number is not uh, difficult but maintaining that share with their competitors to the raised level is, is something which is very important and that is what we which we need to look upon and that is what which we need to understand we go back to the you know the the diversification that we have here in employment again doing the analysis i mean i understand that its bpu comprises of 43% of my total employment for person with disability and that too we have in a pool of around 85 its bpu companies the retail has 9.85% uh, the hospitality has 12.02% the manufacturing has 16.75% uh, and other un unorganized sectors are 18.59% now if you see the future perspective we have a growth target of increasing it at least by 20% for our its retail hospitality and manufacturing sector because this is a standard that we are actually following it and without achieving that level we can't beat up within uh, the demand of this uh, of the you know indian population you know it considered to be as per 2011 census there are uh, 26.8 million people are disabled in india and when we talk about the employing all this 26.8 million people we're seeing in a broader perspective you know this is what we need to achieve rather than uh, going to in a banking sector where we don't have in a penetration i'm expecting it to be go by a 10% the last is other on our my sector i want it to be reduced there are so many challenges attached to it and there's a challenge within a retention there's a challenge within a follow up there's a challenge within employing there's a challenge within a wage uh, there's a challenge within a relocation there's a challenge within a regular funding thing there's a challenge within accommodation so you know this is in a sector where we are facing a more challenging Uh, thing in terms of employing although it's in a very lucrative thing because you know these are organized sectors are are available everywhere you know you find a small shop small small industries so you know uh, these are problem but if you if you look at the longer and broader perspective of retention there's a great fall in it so we need to uh, you know look and do an analysis and understanding on this uh, this perspective of doing it that you know how to maintain it uh, that what is an a uh, goal thing that we have and what are the structure that we are following where we need improvement where we need to reduce and i think these all should be done uh, with the with the management along with the respective members for me you know um, before placing on a target uh, to the respective centers i make sure we have in a one meeting uh, of discussing it where we understand the challenge where we do an ice breaking thing or what management wa wants and what we the uh, what the you know center level or a state level management wants to achieve and then try to bring them to on a common goal 
so that you know it should create a win-win situation. So these are the sum of the employment exposure visits that we have, uh, some of the interviews that we have conducted, uh, roundtable conferences uh, that we have. So that's it, that's it from my side. Uh,